If you are looking for any games or game codes at a discount, head on over to G2A.com. I am sponsored by them. And if you use my link in the description, you will get a discount and also help me out. Check out G2A.com. YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 news video. All right, folks, it is Thursday, which means we're going to do our usual roundup of all the latest Destiny 2 news. And the season of the Redacted will be here in, well, roughly two weeks or less than that. Well, I have a question for you guys in the comments section. Do you have high expectations or low expectations for the summer season? Simply leave it in the comments section. High or low? What are you thinking? And if you want to elaborate, please elaborate. I want to make a video this weekend discussing it. My thought process is usually the summers are really, really fun and it builds up hype into a fall expansion. So I think my personal opinion right now, I think the summer is going to be pretty fun. So let's get into the news. And if you enjoy this video, a like rating is appreciated. But more importantly, leave me that comment on the summer season. And of course, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And guys, I really appreciate the support. When I started bringing up the numbers of how many folks that watch my videos are not subscribed, we were at 62%. Now it's down to 56.1%. All right, I'll stop talking about it once we reach around 50 percent all right you guys have been just crushing it lately and i really appreciate all the new subscribers and all the support all right well, let's jump into it first off dylan from bungie the community manager or one of the two community managers did chime in over on twitter to clarify a few things with regards to the new world loot pool for season 11 so we're getting this big old world loot pool and we could see a number of weapons and all of this comes from the This Week at Bungie from last week. And we could see weapons like uh, Dire Promise, The Old Fashioned, Gnawing Hunger, let's see, Last Perdition, uh, Nature of the Beast, a whole bunch of weapons that people generally like and want to get. However, they did close off this uh, section here with, uh, if you still need a weapon or weapon roll from the current Vanguard, Crucible or Gambit playlist that is not on that list, well, you better go grab it now. So Dylan uh, responded to Hey Fitzy over on Twitter. I'll link him in the description. And he's part of Dado's clan math class. He uh, just wanted him to clarify things. And also uh, he posed the question, will the weapon listed in the season 11 world loot pool be retired next June then? Now the answer is pretty straightforward, but there is a caveat with this one here. So he says, if there's a weapon currently available from Vanguard, Crucible, or Gambit that is not on a list provided in the TWAB, get it before it's gone. And he says, this is more of a note for collectors, but I don't really agree with that one because a lot of the weapons that come from Gambit, Crucible, and uh, the good old Vanguard, you know, guys, even though we're getting power capped on a lot of things here, they're still going to be good for quote unquote normal activities. What do I mean by that? I mean by non end game stuff. Like, you can get a really good roll on a weapon and only use it for PvP and not have to worry about a power cap. You just won't be able to use it in like Iron Banner or Trials of Osiris. Then he also said, too, some weapons will have new max power levels and others will not. But then he further followed it up with, well, someone asked about uh, Dire Promise. Uh, that'll have the max power of any Season 10 weapons. Other weapons that are new to the season, like Nature of the Beast being updated with random rolls, will have a new max power level. This will be detailed in a weapon UI come Season 11 launch. Now, I still think like the PvP example that I gave you before is, well, applicable to the PvE side of things. Even though you may have a really good PvE roll and it's going to be sunsetted, it will have a max power cap. Well, depending on what Bungie does to all of the power levels, whether it's the story missions, which no one does because there's no reason to do them, or let's say strikes or doing patrols and things like that, you could still do, well, I mean, use those weapons in those activities and they should be fine. And especially with the seasonal artifacts bumping up your power level, I still think, look, hold on to your really good PvE rolls. I, I did a mass cleaning of my vault and I'm saving anything that I think is going to be good for PvE and PvP. Next up, there's a really cool blog you want to check out that I'm going to link in the description and it's an interview and has a whole bunch of like concept art pictures and detailed pictures of the bunkers and how they came to life basically and Deej does an interview with uh, a uh, person named Dima and I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name because I will butcher it but um, it's a really cool read and also really cool to see all of these images and how they came up with all of the different ideas to make the bunkers and also the final mission where we get our fell winters lie and so forth so make sure you check it out i will put the link in the description next up let's move into the this week at bungie for the 28th of may written by deej deej hasn't written one of these in a long time but uh no trailer no roadmap nothing regarding the next season yet well well more than likely get it next week and 
uh, more than likely next Monday or Wednesday, or maybe even at reset. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. I'm hoping it's not Monday. I have a vet appointment for uh, Max, my dog, and uh, I'd rather not cancel it, but I do got to cover it as soon as it hits. So anyway, let's dive into the This Week at Bungie. Deej does tease a little bit here. Rasputin is at full power. We are as ready as we'll ever be. Now eclipsing our own sun is a stark reminder that a great threat approaches eyes up. So I guess at any moment, we're going to see the Almighty getting closer and closer. And I know I talked about it on uh, Tuesday's reset video that you can't see the Almighty. Well, if you get the tower in the right moment and the sun is shining and then you change your field of view and then if you zoom in, well, then you could see the Almighty. But what we're really waiting on is some people... Uh, I covered this a few weeks ago where they flew into the tower and they were in an instance where some of the tower was damaged, not like destroyed or anything, but a certain part near Zavala. I don't have the pictures of the clip or anything anymore, but basically it looks like like debris or something from the Almighty hit the tower and permanently damaged it. Now Deej moves into, well, what's next? You know, normally we have uh, E3 and uh, some other events where people get together, but because of the human malware that's out there right now, that's a joke from GMD Geek, um, people can't really travel, right? So... Uh, let me read this verbatim. Destiny has been a shared pastime for long enough now to have established strong traditions. Each year we spend in service of the Guardians. We can mark our calendars by the next development milestone we'll reach or the next event we'll attend to spread the news. Some of us have had the remarkable privilege to travel the world and to meet some of you fine people to talk about what comes next. This year finds us all in a scenario that puts us all very far away from business as usual. Basically, all flights originating from our tower are grounded. Development of Destiny 2 continues, only we are all working from the safety of our homes. We have exciting news to share with you about our plans, but it won't happen at some fancy convention under hot lights. Instead, we will use the internet. If you are familiar with the rituals and cycles that mark a year in the life of a guardian, you must be curious as to when we will begin the conversation about what's next. Uh, we can't put a date on it just yet, but we will very soon. That's a promise. We know you're hungry for that news and we're just as eager to deliver it. Keep your eyes trained on at Bungie for updates over on Twitter. We'll stream our announcements in the usual places. You'll learn about the next season of Destiny 2 at the same time that we talk about the next chapter in the story that has been unfolding all year long. So it looks like we're going to get a big old stream that we'll talk about one the summer season, and also the fall expansion, and hopefully the Dorito ships that will be coming inbound. And uh, I'll be streaming that live right here on YouTube, because, you know, Bungie gives us permission to kind of restream as long as we're, you know, commenting and interacting with everyone on chat, and I'll have my little face cam there for you guys. So, as soon as they announce it, I'll be streaming it right, uh, yeah, live right here on YouTube. Next up, uh, production director Justin Truman does kind of talk a little bit about how they've been developing the This Week at Bungie, and really taking the community approach or our ideas as to what they want, well, what we want them to talk about. And he says, five weeks ago, we promised a series of deep dives on the state of destiny and how we plan to change it in season 11 and year four. We've enlisted seven members of the destiny team to provide as much detail as we could. And I'd encourage you to go back and read any of the topics you may have missed. And in the This Week at Bungie, which I will link in the description, there's multiple links to the past This Week's at Bungie. Uh, and he says, we've covered a lot of ground. And while we're going to continue to provide uh, updates each week to topics you care about, we want to shift our focus focus in the coming weeks. We've said a lot about changes coming in year four, but we haven't talked to you about how year four begins. Uh, very soon, we'll do just that. I kicked off a series of deep dives and some promises, but I want to end the series on a more personal note. Being unable to go into the office trying to figure out how to keep building this game we love from our laptops and our couches had me thinking a lot about commitment. Video game development is messy. Evolving Destiny 2 in an open, transparent way involves showing and shipping plenty of missteps along with improvements. But it continues to be worth it every step of the way because I can honestly say that this is the most welcoming and passionate community of players I have ever encountered in any game. We are committed to this game, to staying transparent about our plans, and to this relationship we have with our community. The reasons we started this journey 10 years ago have not changed. We're committed to building a world anyone can be a part of, where everyone can feel powerful, and where you might reconnect with old friends and make some new ones. However, check this statement out here, guys. So we look forward to continuing this conversation and continuing 
continuing to evolve Destiny 2 together. And in 12 days, we can't wait to show you more of what we've been working on. Stay safe out there, Guardians. So as of uh, 12 days from now, today is May 28th. Well, they're going to show us some more. Don't forget, it is the end of the month, which means you can get your free exotic loot. And it looks like we've got the Prospector, the Belvedere, the Hecuba S Exotic Sparrow, and also the Pintail Shell, which is a legendary ghost shell. Now, this is available if you have Twitch Prime. I will put the link in the description as long as your Twitch Prime account is linked to your Bungie account, you can log in and then claim these rewards from Amanda Holiday. So that's pretty much it for the video, guys. And yeah, I'm excited for this, guys. We're going to see stuff real soon. And 12 days from now, we're going to see a lot more stuff. So keep it locked in here. Make sure you hit that subscribe and bell notification. If anything is streaming, I'll be streaming it live right here on YouTube. If they release something big like multiple trailers and multiple roadmaps and like a new web page showing everything off from the season, I'll just fire up the live stream and we can go over everything together and hang out because I love hanging out with all you guys when I stream. I stream live here on YouTube. All right, guys, leave me a good old hashtag made it to the end. If you did make it to the end and do me a favor, drop a like at this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream. Usually no is on YouTube and that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.